Hi, my name is Carol Lang, Editor-in-Chief of Endocrinology, the flagship basic science journal of the Endocrine Society. Today, we're going to talk about publishing with special guest, Dr. Steve Hamas. Steve is the previous Editor-in-Chief of Molando and Endocrinology. Hi, Steve. Hey, Carol. Hey, Steve, what advice can you give young trainees or faculty as they prepare to submit a publication? That's a great question. Of course, we're always really excited when we have this great data and we want to try and publish it. And I think that excitement really needs to be reflected in the paper. So as you're starting to put together your story, I think you really want to ask, how are you going to sell this? I have great data, but how am I going to explain it in a way that the reader is going to be just as excited as I am? And it's really all about putting together your story in such a way. So you want to have a great title that says what you did. You want to have a great abstract that very concisely says in more detail what you did. And you just want to have wonderful figures that, that really serve in their own right is a way for a reader to look at them and tell what you accomplished and be impressed by what you accomplished. So being excited and putting that excitement on paper, I think is critical. And in the meantime, while you're doing all this, I think it's also important to start thinking about who's going to read your paper. So Carol, maybe you could talk a little bit about how you choose a journal. Sure. So I kind of feel like every paper is a story and, and every story kind of has this flavor and every journal actually has a flavor also. And so it's really trying to match those flavors. Um, so basically you want to kind of think of, I usually tell people kind of think of like maybe two or three of your, of your best kind of matches that in your head as you're writing this paper, you're kind of writing it for this journal or that one. Maybe have three in mind and then go online and review their scope statements and look at their editorial board and their editor. See if you recognize people from your field that you might've seen at symposia or endocrine society meetings or something. Make sure that, that, that your people that represent your field are actually on that board. And then kind of think about other practical things like the length of the paper, the length requirements. Maybe, maybe it's an open access journal. Uh, how much does it cost to publish there? Um, you know, and then once you have that in mind, you know, kind of rank them, kind of rank them according to maybe uh, their time to first decision and the important metric, the impact factor. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that, Steve. Sure, Carol. I think impact factor is really critical and somewhat controversial, right? We all want to publish in journals that have super high impact factors. But on the other hand, it's really important to realize that those journals are tough. It's hard to get in. Usually the time to publication from submission to publication could be a year, sometimes longer. They're very, very strict. And so if you're a young investigator or a new investigator, that may be too long. You need to get some papers out there so that you can start to move forward in your career. So thinking about high impact versus medium impact, but a really good journal with a great reputation, that's an important conversation to have with your fellow authors and, and to really think about. Sometimes it makes the most sense to go with a society journal because society journals are, they fit a lot of the criteria Carol just described. They have editorial boards with people you know. They have great reputations. You know you're going to get a fair shake. So that's why oftentimes submitting to a journal like endocrinology makes a lot of sense. And then, of course, once you submit it, a lot of people wonder what happens. So maybe, Carol, you can talk a little bit about that process from submission to hearing back. Sure. So once you submit your paper online, you click that little button and, it, and your paper's gone, uh, it'll come to the, the publications office people. So what happens is it comes to the managing editor. They're going to open it up and look at it and make sure it fits our scope statement. And then they're going to look at, say, OK, what is this paper about? And we have a, a list of associate editors associated with endocrinology. So these associate editors are representing all fields in endocrinology. And so they're going to shoot it to one of our AEs. And then that person has between one and three days to make a decision whether they're going to reject the paper or decide to send it out. So if they send it out, they're going to be then tapping into a very large database of reviewers. They're going to type in keywords and a whole bunch of reviewers will come up and they're going to invite at least two peer review reviewers with expertise that matches the paper. Those reviewers are going to have to accept. They have a couple days to accept. Once they accept, they're agreeing to the review that paper within two weeks, maybe 10 business days or two weeks. And then they send that back with reviews, written reviews. The AE takes a look at it, decides whether it should be rejected or it could be revised. In that case, it would be major revision, minor revision. It goes back to the authors. They have a couple months to revise it. It'll come back in. It'll go back to the original reviewers. And then hopefully within one or two tries of revisions, it'll be accepted. Once it's accepted, very quickly, it'll appear on PubMed and for everyone to see it. 
Great. So, so again, I think that what you just said really emphasizes the point that from the very beginning, people are looking for exciting and interesting manuscripts. It's got to get past that triage with the associate editor. It's got to get through the reviewers. And so it really does emphasize what we sort of talked about at the beginning, having a really good story and spending the time to tell it in a really good and exciting way is absolutely critical. Wouldn't you agree? I totally agree. And you know, I'll just relate one story from when I got my PhD. My PhD thesis advisor was a guy named Al Malkinson. And Al always said, you know, to make your best story, just take all your data out of your notebook and arrange it in front of you, put it in front of you and, and move it around, add things, take things out, even put negative data, put things that you think may not even be in the story, but just kind of see if they might fit. And then try to come up with your best story, not how you, not in the order of how you did the experiments chronologically, but really in the order of how they make the most sense and tell the most exciting story. And that was great advice because he got so many papers during his career. Um, so with that, um, you know, I'll just say, Steve, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. And this has been a great discussion. And I really welcome all your papers here at Endocrinology. Thanks and have a great day.